Welcome to another video. In this one, I'm gonna do a brief product review on this all top 12 volt portable air compressor I just picked up. And then I'm gonna do a direct comparison to see which one pumps the tire up quicker, my onboard mounted ARB compressor or the all top. We're gonna to be pumping up my P265 7516 tires from uh, a dead flat. So should be a good little test. Theoretically, the all top should do it twice as quick since this is rated at 6.35 cubic feet per minute at zero PSI. And this is only rated at 3.08 cubic feet per minute. We'll go over a few more specs on the ARB later, but jumping back to this one, it's rated at 150 PSI, 45 minute duty cycle at 40 PSI. Uh, on Amazon, about $160 you can pick one of these up for. Now, I was looking at a bunch of different ones and it seems like this general design is it's just a, a bunch of manufacturers have the exact same design. Like Smitty Built has one, a bunch of other names I've never heard of. And they all are slightly different. Like they might have outlets right here instead of right there. So I guess this cylinder jug, you can actually drill these out and put new threads in if you wanted. But it seems this is a pretty, pretty popular design over in the Chinese manufacturing area. Now upon pulling this out of the package, I was happy to feel its weight. It does got some, some good mass to it, but also disappointed when I saw that these brackets uh, on the bottom are bent and then this switch was actually popped out of here too, but that was no big deal. That actually gave me an opportunity to see the inside and these uh, all the connections in here are soldered. Sloppy solder, but it's better than uh, than than spade connectors, right? But now I'm looking at it again. Check this out. This actually has a crack right here too. So uh, I might have to email the manufacturer about that. But yeah, so that was my first impression. All right, it's got damage and the box wasn't damaged on the outside. Next thing I noticed was the air connection style is not a very common one from my experience. I don't know if this is like a metric style, but I don't have one of these in the States. And so I was originally kind of swap it over to put the style that I use all the time. We'll go back to what I did right here, but pulling these threads out, these are like a metric pipe thread. So completely different than the standard NPT threads in here. And uh, so unless you go get an adapter for it or drill a new threads in the head, well, you're stuck with this. The air filters on top, easy to access. You just stick your fingers under there, pull this cover up, I'm trying not to break it off, pull it straight up. There we go, and that is your air filter. It doesn't come with a spare one, not very beefy, and I'm sure that uh, if you're in dusty environments, that could get clogged up. Well, you might wanna snap it on straight though. The cables are pretty standard. No fuse block on them though. And when you slide this rubber up, you can see that there is no crossover um, copper cable on these alligator clips. So that's not good to see because uh, a good alligator clip is gonna have a crossover wire on there. While it doesn't have a fuse, it does have a circuit breaker up here though. So that's, at least it's got that, right? Probably better than a fuse, honestly. Now I'm gonna fire this up and show you the next thing I don't love about it, but this is common to pretty much every portable 12 volt compressor I've seen. It doesn't have a pressure off switch. So when you turn it on, it's going, if you kink off the hose, it just starts hitting that blow off valve right there. It will not, you know, it's pegging that, that blows off at around 140 PSI, according to this gauge anyway. But I, I just wish it had a switch built in to the power lead so that way when it hits 150, it would shut off. That'd be cool. I mean, you could always add that modification in the future if you'd like to though. So make sure your blow off valve works. Otherwise you're gonna rupture this tube or the hose or the cylinder head. It's gonna blow off and hit you in the face. It does come with this nice long hose. And see, so what I did is I actually cut the hose and I added a coupling that I'm used to using. So all my uh, air tools will fit on here. If I wanna plug different tire filler up, it comes with this uh, threaded tire filler and the gauge is mounted in line. I was reading in the reviews, a lot of people said, don't rely on this, it's not accurate at all. And it does come with this little carrying case, a couple other accessories for filling balls and a clip on tire valve. Nothing too fancy, but let's see what she's got now compared to the ARB. Fire these up and see how long it takes to fill the tires. I am gonna leave the Schrader valve in for this test, even though taking that would probably help out with the flow. Just touching on this ARB compressor before we uh, get started, I will plug a link to this one down below and the all top two, so if you wanna see these models uh, on Amazon, check them out down there. 
but this has been here i got it four years ago 290 dollars, and it's it's been extremely reliable i think it's a very good quality unit it comes with the wiring and relays for hooking it up to the battery and most importantly it comes with a pressure shutoff switch which i'm sorry that's located right here i believe so when yeah this is my solenoid valve for my rear air locker so when this thing hits 90 psi it shuts the compressor off it just is nice that's great it doesn't just keep running you know but portable ones don't generally have that so uh, this is only rated for 90 psi and i don't see that as a problem because i mean 150 is great but when are you really using 150 you're not running air tools so i had this line going back to a stainless steel tank behind my truck and i've kinked these off so that won't affect the test i have an air coupling on the back and here's what that stainless tank looks like it's mounted underneath uh, on top of the hitch pretty simple of course the ARB doesn't come with a hose but I made this custom hose which I'll plug a link to this video on this over here if you ever want a hose for filling all four tires at the same time this design works pretty awesome I'll just hook this up open the ball valve got my uh, gauge on and then these are just those clip-in style valves and on the end you have a uh, coupling as well this thing really saves a lot of time when you're pumping up all four tires say you were off-road and lowered them down to 15 psi or whatever uh, but if you're going to build one of these make sure that you get the sealed clip on um, because the ones that are open on there well that wouldn't work if you're filling just one tire so you got to make sure the ones that are sealed when you're not using them they have two different kinds all right let's give the arb a little head start since it's only three cubic feet per minute and then hit this one and hit the timer this is much lower RPMs, as you can hear, slightly lower. Three minutes and 15 seconds. Let's see what we're at. I don't know if we're at exactly 40. Stop the ARB first. And then hit this thing. That's just the box making it rattle, I think. Alright, let me take my hose off because that's that one was leaking, so let's note that. That makes this test not so accurate. Oh cool, this one was leaking a little bit too though. So that makes it even, right? Alright, then let's see. So three minutes and 15 seconds, the ARB was able to pump up to about 25 PSI. And the all top in the same time frame, well, look at that, 38. So all top definitely has the win if you need the speed. Uh, of course, as to be expected. I don't know if I'd call that double the pace though, but of course the pressure is going to, the volume is going to start slowing down as the pressure increases. So. Who knows, that one probably would have taken a lot longer to get up to 38. I will note that having two compressors hooked up to one battery was a pretty big load for it. And if you start your truck up, it's going to pump up considerably faster than that's with the charging voltage of 14.5. Let's check some temperatures real quick too. The ARB is 130 degrees on this outlet block. And this all top after three minutes, let's go on the outlet block on this one, 108. So, and... Um, Let's, let's hit the cylinder too. 150 on the cylinder head and the cylinder head on this one, only 136. So yeah, not A or B actually ran cooler surprisingly, but even though it was running the high RPM, you do gotta be careful that you don't burn yourself with these. If you run this for 10 minutes, it's definitely gonna be hot enough to burn you. One other thing I really like about the ARB is that it has eighth inch mpt on this this outlet so you can adapt it to whatever you need very easily uh, unlike the all top that does not have that has that funky connection and different pipe threads than what i'm used to seeing so overall i'm going to say it's a pretty good unit for the money it they both got the tires pumped up to where you could drive within three minutes this one got it up a little bit higher so it's got that extra volume it is portable uh, they both have around the same duty cycle of 40%. I think this one's actually 45% uh, at 40 PSI is what they advertise. And amperage is 45 amps. So I'll go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Works good. Make sure to check out those links down below if you want to see these compressors. 
Again, I think this is very similar to the Smitty Built and a bunch of other Chinese no-name compressors that uh, they look the same as this. So it seems to be a proven design. It's unfortunate that mine has the damage on it, so I'll have to reach out to, company, to the company and see if they can do anything for me on that. Uh, make sure to drop this video a thumbs up, a comment, or anything like that. Hopefully, uh, you know, it helped you out and gave you some insight on the compressor. So, until next time, KZ Guy 2 here, Chris Brown, no nonsense, no how, whatever it is, and hopefully I will see you in another video. See you next time.